Okay, welcome everyone to our panel session, Apache Way for Business. And I have with me a hand-picked group of four people who are not on the board at the moment. Unfortunately, we are clashing with the board meeting, um, but I'm hoping that between them, we have a good mix of experience, different projects, different ages, different levels of having been or nearly been incubator PMC chair, to tell us a little bit about involving businesses in the Apache Software Foundation, building businesses on top of it, things that have worked, things that maybe didn't work quite so well, and perhaps also some sort of warning signs for this incubating project is going to need a bit more help before it's ready to graduate. So, what I'd like to do is get a very brief introduction from all of our panel, and then I'll kick off with some of the questions we've got. Okay. Well, I'll start then. Uh, my name is Ate Dauma. I've been involved with Apache since 2004 or something, and committer, uh, became a committer that year, and been involved with several projects, um, still involved with several projects. Nowadays, the last few years, mostly as a mentor of potlings in the incubator. Uh, seen some potlings graduate uh, uh, successfully, like Arivata or uh, AstraxDB. I'm currently mentor on NetBeans and Apache Streams. Um, yeah, so it's my involvement right now. Hello everyone, my name is Roman. <coughs> I apologize for my voice because I'm recovering from, from a cold, but hopefully you can hear me all right. Uh, so I've been involved in ASF since 2008, uh, roughly, mostly in big data Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, I actually used to be a VP of Apache Incubator, you know, mentor on a few projects, so Spark, I guess, is, you know, the most famous one out of everything that I've mentored so far. Um, and interestingly enough, you know, this involvement in Apache from the business slash new projects perspectives actually was partially responsible for lending me my current job, which is at Pivotal, where I am director of open source. Um, because Pivotal at the time wanted to have somebody familiar with open source uh, to help them uh, open source all of its data portfolio. And, you know, including sort of legal side of it, you know, developer education, you know, sales, uh, basically the whole end-to-end, -end, you know, business strategy plus, you know, actual execution. Uh, so that was really unusual that, you know, something that I thought I was doing just for fun and for free would all of a sudden, you know, lend me a job. Like I'm expected to be hired as a committer on Foo, but not as a, you know, incubator guy. So that's me. Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Daniel Rogeri, and uh, in the ASF, I've been involved in the, the web server project, I guess, uh, uh, since the mid-2000s, uh, became committer in 2010, uh, just became member uh, earlier this year, and uh, I've hung around the, uh, the community list quite a bit because uh, we, we do love our community here, and then also uh, sticking around with the uh, incubator a bit. Uh, what's kind of neat... Uh, similar to what you're saying. I, I'm coming at it from a different angle. I'm, uh, I'm actually in an industry uh, where open source is kind of weird. Uh, so I'm, I'm one of our inner sourcing evangelists, uh, using that as a foothold to kind of uh, move our own uh, stuff that we're doing in-house into the public. Um, so happy to talk with you guys about those things uh, if you have such an interest. And I'm John Amon. I actually came to the incubator in 2011 as part of a new podling and have kind of stuck around since. You probably know my name from the board reports and having to remind everyone to actually get their report out there so that we have something of substance. Um, I'm with Tamaya and Juno and now Agent and I, Ariotoska and probably a few other podlings that I can't think of off the top of my head. Um, trying to get them through the rest of the incubator and get them promoted to top level projects. And similar to what Roman and Daniel just talked about, I am also working on trying to get some internal software open sourced 
throughout my company to get them actually contributing back more and more to open source. Okay. So I am... Um been going around the conference the last couple of days, picking people's brains on what topics they'd like us to cover today. Um, I'm going to try and have us tell a story, ticking off as many of those as possible. Um, please do grab the mic if you feel you have something to say on the topic or you've got something to contribute. So the first one that comes up, especially with newer uh, companies coming into the ASF, they sort of come along and say either what's all this about individuals or how do I get five of my staff to be committers on this project that I've just decided is really important. Can someone talk on the, the individuals and the, the why that matters for the second question? I guess I can definitely take a stab at that. Uh, the reason I reached out for the mic is because I also happen to be an employee of Linux Foundation, uh, which is a different way of doing open source collaborative projects. And with Linux Foundation, it is all about companies in a way, right? You know, because with Linux Foundation, developers, of course, do matter. But at the end of the day, it's companies agreeing on the governance and sort of the bylaws and, you know, how the project is structured and what it means to be a committer and what it means to be on a PMC if there is such a thing. Uh, and it's just a different way of governing. I mean, I'm not saying that one is better than the other. Actually, nowadays that I'm also an employee of Linux Foundation, it would be weird for me to say that one is better than the other. It's just they're different, right? And explaining the difference is probably the first step that you go through when a new company comes and tries to open source something or you know, suggest it to Apache, uh, because it may very well be the case that Apache is not a good place for them. Uh, so, like, us asking this, you know, there is a certain presumption that, of course, the answer is no. Like, you know, <laughs> we, of course, we should tell those companies that it's all about individuals and you cannot really just make committers willy nilly. Well, the, you can, just not with ASF. So if, you know, GitHub works for you, great. If, you know, Linux Foundation works for you, great. It's just ASF happens to be opinionated about very few things, but the ones that we're opinionated about, we're really strongly opinionated about. And what I find super useful is just getting it out there as quickly as possible. Because the list is not big. You know, you can basically articulate that list within, you know, 15, 20 minutes and say, like, here's the stuff we will absolutely not budge on. Everything else is negotiable. So to me, that's kind of like, that's how you open the conversation. And then everything else flows, you know, from that set of non-negotiable principles. Yeah, I, I can fully agree on that. Um, I think I can also give a, an, an other angle on that. My company, Hippo, um, is really uh, providing an open source uh, product, which is Apache licensed, and it's been so since, I think, 2005 already. So we've been kind of having a logical and natural tie in the way of thinking, the Apache way, and for us as a company to participate and contribute to the ASF, is uh, the natural thing to do because we rely on like 80, 90 percent of our code base is itself based on Apache uh, projects, and we build our product on top of it, which is again Apache license. But so we rely heavily on the health and the durability of the underlying stack where we building our product upon. So contributing and participating in these projects is like fundamental thing for us to, to do so. It's just gardening and, and supporting our own underlying stack. And, um, and another thing in that is um, we rely on these Apache projects. We also contributing on uh, a project of our own, which we d started in the Apache Foundation. But the point is not so much to get it in the open source or get it at Apache as such. Uh, it's more like the Apache way of sharing the projects, having multiple uh, parties and people involved in that so you get a diversity and that gives a longer lifeline and insurance that what you might want to take out of that project is not necessarily the only way. And, uh, by having multiple people contribute on that. 
from a diverse set of companies or, or individual participants on that, you actually build a stronger product with a much longer durability of that. So for us, that's, well, the natural thing to do and it's just guarding our own product foundation in the, in the long run. Well, and then the, also the, one of the final things to point out as a 501c3, we, we cannot uh, give any particular special benefit to any particular special entity such as a business. So uh, it, it really is software as a public good. So um, if, if one company kind of owns the PMC of any particular project, that could put tax status at risk, right? And nobody wants to deal with that. Okay, um, relating to the individuals thing, um, one thing that we sometimes try and educate the companies with is that having your staff involved in an Apache project is a good thing for the staff member and makes them happier. Anyone want to touch on some of the employee benefit type stuff from that? So I'll, I'll be one of the, yeah, I'll jump right into that because I have the mic, so. <laughs> um, uh, so I'll, I'll kind of tell my own story. Uh, I, I am uh, absolutely floored that through my involvement in the project, uh, I've met some really great people. I've been exposed to some really great ideas. Uh, my professional network, my personal network has grown quite a bit. Uh, so, I mean, it, it's really obvious to say, oh, uh, Daniel just joined uh, this community. Uh, he's submersed in some of the most brilliant minds in the world. How could, how could that not be a good thing, right? I mean. It, that just seems so obvious to me, so. So I'll add to that and say, it's really great to even see your own open source in use in your commercial products. Um, it is, not everything is gonna be open source and I think we all understand that and the Apache license is focused on the fact that there is a difference between your commercial products, your open source products. And being able to leverage that, being able to draw both internal ideas and external ideas from the community to try to build the open source pieces makes it so that your notoriety is out there, your public recognition over what you're doing is something that's just coming up constantly, assuming that what you're working on is a great project that lots of people are using. And interestingly enough, what I also found very sort of compelling <clears throat> is when you explain to developers that ASF basically functions as a constitution. You know, if those developers from the corporation contribute to an ASF project, they have certain rights. Just like anybody who is subject to a constitution, you know, has a certain set of rights. And a lot of those rights actually ha help in dealing with what's typically known as managerial bullshit. So when somebody tells you, when somebody tells you like go and you know fix this, you know without opening a Jira because you know maybe we found a security hole and don't tell anybody, like if it's just your boss telling you to do that on an internal project, there's not really much you can do. If it's your boss telling you to do that on an Apache project, there's a lot you can do, and not in a defiant sense, not in like, well, this is bullshit, I'm not going to do this. But it's like, no, if we do this, we will get kicked out of incubator or ASF. I cannot do it not because I am, you know, just defying you. I cannot do it because it will jeopardize the project. And that works extremely well. Not a single company wants to be a poster child for the first project that got kicked out of ASF because they violated, you know, the constitution. So yeah, you know, when you explain it to developers, especially, you know, the, the ones that have been subject to the sort of closed source development, they're like, yeah, we want ASF. And you know, that's how you get them going. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and I'd like to add in the, the I mean, that I, I fully agree, but it's kind of the negative view on that. Um, for my company, it's actually beneficial to uh, uh, being an open source project and, and, and actually our product is used by uh, uh, large uh, uh, organizations like Dutch government and governmental organizations really uh, find the uh, uh, and, and, and uh, find the fact that it's open source and backed by uh, ASF or Apache licensed communities a really strong point in in trusting 
uh, the company in contributing and honoring uh, the, 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 the quality of the product itself. So the fact that we have several committers within the company who on an individual basis participate at the ASF uh, kind of also showcases to our customers that the company truly is of good faith and, and investing in that and in doing the thing beyond just the commercial benefit of the company, company alone. So that's a, a major added value, I think, uh, not just for the employee itself, but through, our, through him also to the company. Okay. So I was chatting last week with a company interested in getting involved in an Apache project. And they said, we've got some money and we've got a couple of developers and we really want this new feature adding to project name removed to avoid embarrassment. Mm -hmm. um, how do we do it? Like, I, I tried ringing up the sponsorship team and said, you know, hey, can I give you some money to add that feature? And they just said no. What, what am I supposed to do? I've got money, I've got developers, help me. What, what, do, we, what do we say to those well-meaning but confused people who want to help? <laughs> Start off by reaching out to that community. Um, we see a lot of mails on Comdev and on Webmaster and Incubator or General List saying, we want to add this feature. It's great that you're start, trying to start at a top level, but you really need to focus on the actual project and talk to that project directly to figure out what can you do to contribute this back. It could be that they're used to doing things like Jira tickets with patches, or they're used to doing GitHub pull requests. You have to reach out to that community first, figure out what works best for them. It's gonna be different project to project. No two pro well, a lot of projects do operate the same way, but not every project operates with a consistent mantra of what it is they're doing. You seem really eager. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I actually love this question because it pops up all the time when I talk to companies as well. And I think, you know, the analogy I've sort of finally settled on is this. Like, I'm a big football fan, not, you know, American football, the real one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so whenever a company asks that question, it's as though they're asking a question. We have this favorite team of ours, but it seems to be losing all the time. How can we help? What do we do to make it win? Like, do we go to FIFA and give FIFA some money? Well, I guess you could do that. It doesn't do you any good, but, you know, it actually gets you in trouble, as we've found out, you know, recently. But it's just, it, it's not how it operates, right? Well, if you want to help, you actually find out, like, you reach out to the club, right? You know, you reached out to the team that is losing. And that team is typically operating as a club, right? And within that club, you can basically have all sorts of conversations. Maybe it's a different player that needs to be brought onto the team, right? Maybe it's somebody from a different club that the club just doesn't have money to, you know, buy from, you know, some other club. But if you donate some extra money, you know, that player can be bought. Now, does it guarantee that the team will win? Absolutely not. But at least you increase their chances. The same way it works with ASF, right? If you want your project to actually develop a feature, you reach out to the community, and you can even pay people within or outside the community, you know, as contractors to develop that feature. Is it guaranteed that that feature will be developed per your specification? Absolutely not. But if you found the right people, at least they would give it the best try they could possibly give it. Um, yes, and then that feature should align with the uh, community uh, goals of the project itself that's that's the first rule so if you want something which is like completely opposite direction of what the community is, is going towards you can throw as much money in at it if you want to but it's not likely to succeed at all so first of all you need you have two ways of doing it either you build up a strong story which will convince and, and bring interest from that community for the feature you want to uh, get, get realized, then it's more like an organic thing. If you get people as, as, as interested in that feature, typically the community will pick it up. Uh, you might need to invest some time and, and effort in supporting people, like from your own company, developers, who start participating in the community. Uh, feeding uh, uh, Jira tickets or, or actually, well, in time become committers on their own, 
But all in all, it's still the direction of the project and the community who will decide what the end result will be. So truly, if you want some feature delivered in a project, join the project, participate in the project and align with the, the vision and the thoughts going on there. And if you want stuff changed, do a little bit more work and gradually grow into that community and see if you can make people within there interested in the direction you want to go. That's the road to success in this case. And then a related question we sometimes get is, when this was my project, before I gave it to the ASF, I could say, we're going to have 1.0 next Tuesday. Do I have any control? Do I have any way of trying to meet these things, especially since next week my CEO is standing up on stage and I can't really slip the release date of the conference? <laughs> yeah, what, what do we say to them about how they can... It's kind of the same question in my book. Um, it's, it's even more unlikely to succeed if you just say next week something, um, unless you already have that whole community aligned and everybody's already focusing on getting this lift and still you have no guarantee because there are some rules to, to be applied, sanity checks, uh, validation checks, and, and you're not as a company owning that process. There are typically a, a, a a good diversity of different participants, uh, and they're all individuals, there's no one company owning that, who have a say in that process. And if you get everybody convinced and working towards that goal, yes, you have a chance. Uh, but you already should be more or less part of the whole process to begin with, to even make a claim like that. And then still, it's not a claim, it's, it's a kind of hope and suggestion and you can pull that off, but only if you are on the right track within the community itself. I actually, I guess I will not necessarily disagree with this viewpoint, just maybe offer you know, an alternative one. Uh, honestly, I'm a big believer in separating projects and products. So going back to your CEO question, the CEO can totally go on stage today or, you know, a couple of hours from now and say whatever he or she wants about the product that the company is producing because that is the brand that is fully controlled by the company. Now, that product may be 90% based on the Apache project or even, you know, 99% based on the Apache project, but that's fine. It's still a separate brand. It's something that the company controls. Now, if the same statement needs to be applied to a project, well, obviously, of course, you're absolutely right. I mean, you just simply cannot do that. But that separation between product, products and projects, I think, is very healthy. And the textbook example of why it could be a problem if you conflate the two has recently been in the news with Docker, you know, basically splitting out the whole Moby thing, you know, and everybody's like, what's that Moby? And like, why is Docker now Docker? Everybody was confused because they actually conflated the two. So for a long time, Docker was product and project at the same time. Now project is called Moby, as it should have been, you know, a different name from the get-go, and the product is still Docker. So not confusing the two from the very early on helps build businesses. So one thing I'll add to that is having a release through any open source project is just like trying to drive an agile team to the delivery of their sprint goals. You can aim as best as you can to delivering, meeting every feature requirement, meeting every need that comes up, but at the end of the day, until it ships, it's not complete. So that CEO, it doesn't matter if they're trying to say Apache CouchDB is being released next week or my internal product based on CouchDB is being released next week. It's gonna be as up to the community as best as they can actually deliver that feature set to meet those goals. Well, and then I'll just repeat what you said, is if you want to drive the community, join the community. If you want to set some certain goals for the project, join the project. Make, them, make the project feel like you're part of the project and not you know, some vested commercial interest that's on the outside because that's a quick way to piss people off, right? So join the project, contribute, show that you bring value all the time, and then when you have an itch to scratch, uh, the, the community is much more likely to hear it. 
I can maybe give a an, an, an small uh, example on how we do this within a company. So our product heavily relies on Apache Jackrabbit, uh, which we have several committers participating in that as well. But our product is called Hippo Repository. So this is like our branded version of Jackrabbit with some added features on that. So we typically have our own release schedule in that. So uh, while we would like to have uh, our improvements or certain uh, fixes to be released, like just before we could release, but we are totally not dependent on that because what we maintain is our light fork of the Apache Jackrabbit. So we maintain a minimal set of patches and that grows and, and reduces yep. over time. So independent of if those patches have been merged and accepted within Apache Jackrabbit or even accepted but not yet released, we are independent of that release schedule. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we have like a final draw in the sand for our product, w of course we do our best to keep our forked patches by and, and, and get them upstream in the Apache Jackrabbit. And sometimes it takes a little bit more time, sometimes a little bit less time, but you should never rely on that dependency. Mm -hmm. And that's just fine because that's the, the good thing of the Apache and the Apache license. We are totally free to brand it and, and have a fork of that um, and be independent of the whole process. Okay. So the, the forking thing is interesting because you sometimes get companies that are new to the ASF, maybe on an existing project, who come in and say, wait, so this isn't like the GPL? I can like take your toys and go home? Yeah, Why would anyone ever contribute back? Can anyone kind of touch on what you need to say about why you maybe don't want to and why you maybe should? So this is a, this is a fundamental question, I guess, about open source, not necessarily in, in the ASF, but uh, what would you not want to contribute back uh, would probably be the things that are your secret sauce, that this is the only way you can make business or, or uh, reach your business goals or um, differentiate yourself from competitors. Uh, but on the flip side is if you're maintaining that special sauce, that's on you to do forever. And that's maintenance. That's work that you have to prepare for. Uh, there's the, 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 the answer I usually give uh, when, when folks are asking about open source uh, is you should open source all of the things that everybody's got to do. If everybody's got to do it, there's no reason why you would want to keep it behind and own that maintenance, and he's got to own the maintenance, and he's got to own the maintenance. That's a shared playground. Let's just all be on the same playing field, and then we can compete in places that are actually really cool and interesting. Um, so that, that would basically be how I'd respond. And then the, the second part is it just sucks maintaining things that, you know, if you could give it back, you should. Okay. Um, so on a... On a related one, hopefully a, a happy question. Would any of you like to share a big win you got for your company from a day job, not necessarily current day job, by contributing something back, getting a, a, getting a private fork squished back to upstream and back tracking the community? I don't know if, I, well, I would say there's been several small wins, uh, and that's the cool part. I mean, uh, participating on, on the web server project, as you can imagine, I run a lot of web servers at my day job, uh, and there were several things that uh, the way we use it or the environment was a little peculiar, uh, so we were able to contribute back some features that made things work a whole lot better for us, and it also made the project itself better. So I, I would say it's it's a it's a big win because it's a win for the community, it's a win for us, uh, and it was constant, right? It wasn't any one particular patch, it was a series of patches that uh, we got a lot of benefit from. I actually would like to add to that from a different perspective. <laughs> uh, not necessarily a company perspective, but a customer. So we basically had a customer who had to maintain essentially a set of plugins into a product that had to be revved up, you know, when you rev up the product itself. And they were actually, you know, there was a, some portion of a contract dedicated to it. And we explained to them that they can actually take that code and push it back into the main project. 
they're like, and then we don't have to maintain it anymore and we don't have to pay anybody? And we're like, yeah, if community accepts your contribution, like, you are set. And like, awesome, let's do it. So we help them, you know, just coach them, you know, Jira's whatnot, and now they don't have to pay anybody. Um, yeah, from a uh, maybe a different perspective, but uh, I mean, we our product is is run by big companies with having large cluster setups of our our CMS product, and uh, uh, they sometimes they they hit some clustering problem and and locking problem. So we really had to go into their environment, fixing the problems, and then figuring out it's actually something which should be fixed upstream. So. Uh, more or less, they paid us to fix the bug, and we pushed it upstream. Mm -hmm. So actually, they indirectly, they were paying for sharing the improvement and the fixes for the whole community to, to, to reap the benefit mm -hmm. from. So I can tell you from my own experience, we fixed a number of security holes and performance issues in Apache user grid. Uh, this was a long time ago. We ran into a number of database constraint issues where there were just too many app servers trying to update the same rows in Cassandra and was causing really bad performance in our environment. We got to a point where 10 concurrent clients were able to cause these sorts of problems. We were able to also run, provide input to security insights that we were seeing from private security scanning as well as just public intrusion detection that we were able to do to provide these security patches to the project so that we didn't have to maintain it and keep everyone secure who was using these projects. So it's not only us who are benefiting it, but we're able to see others in the community be able to take these patches in and actually work with the software and know that at least these security holes that were identified are now fixed. Thanks. So, um, one thing that sometimes flares up with new projects is someone in marketing says something. Maybe Foocorp is the company behind Apache Hadoop. Maybe it's Foocorp have just released Foo, and it, it upsets a lot of people. Um, if you're lucky enough to have Alan working for you, and you've sat your marketers through the, uh, the training set he's done, then maybe that wouldn't happen. But for, uh, <laughs> for, for projects that are coming in and if you're mentoring them, how do you help the engineers help the rest of their company to change? Well, I, I think you just, have to explain it in the terms that you know the marketing people can understand and they understand extremely well what it means to use a brand you know just like they understand that you know using a mickey mouse or you know a disney song in a presentation would probably not be a good idea once you sort of explain it in those terms they're like oh so you're telling me that the source code is free but the brand is not and i'd be like yeah that's what it is and then they actually get to be very reasonable because those are the terms that they used to. I think a lot of times it happens because the assumption is that because the code is available under an extremely permissive license, the brand itself is also available under the same license, which is just that not, not the case. So I can add to that. I think it's also important when you're coming in as a podling, if you are using that name and that is somehow indicative of your company, that is not the name to give to the podling. Uh, the project that's actually powering it should be separate from your corporate entity. So that means that if your company is named Foo, you should not create a podling called Foo. You have to come up with a new name for that project that correctly describes what that project is doing that is independent of the corporate backing behind it. And keeping that separation is very important and actually helps in a lot of these situations. Um, at the same time, there are cases where you do have to go and try to reach out directly to the marketing people there to get some of these press releases fixed. And that is an unfortunate thing to do, but there are cases where the engineers aren't going to be comfortable enough having that conversation, but they may be willing to. 
Um, adding to that, I think uh, everybody also should realize that one of the, the strengths of the Apache way is, the, is indeed the diversity. So if you as a, uh, a company are backing a certain project or supporting it, um, if you try to taint that project, its brand, you might shy off some competitors and other people in the marketplace to actually contribute to that project because they don't want to contribute to a project who's actually like claiming to be well controlled or, or steered by one of your competitors. So actually you're draining the lifeline of your project itself by doing so. Truly, by keeping that separate, you're keeping the a level playing field for everybody to participate, which in the long run guarantees you a, or gives you a more guarantee on, on the quality and the duration of the project. <coughs> so you're actually cutting your own finger if you're trying to claim it because you're cutting like a lifeline. It's literally letting blood run. Okay. Would someone like to channel an inner shame and give a quick explanation of what not to do when one of these things happens. Don't what would what would Shane do? Yes. No, yeah. Don't <laughs> go on Twitter. Uh, so I guess first of all, uh, all the podlings and definitely TLPs. PMCs should be familiar with the branding guidelines that exist and are well documented. I mean, there are not too many things that are extremely well documented, you know, at Apache. Branding guidelines are actually one of those things that are extremely well documented and, you know, not difficult to understand at all. So I encourage all of my podlings to basically go and read them and just sort of internalize them. Now then, uh, the explanation that I try to give them is they are not meant to be enforcement of those sort of guidelines. If it comes, you know, if push comes to shove, I mean, they're not, they're not meant to be the people sort of, you know, trading emails with the company lawyers, you know, trying to explain to the company not to do something, right? Uh, but they're all meant to be uh, in support of the guidelines that are documented, which means that if they see something that is off, at least they should send a note to the uh, PMC's mailing list, you know, in private, if, if that requires to be in private, just saying, hey, you know, I've noticed that this company is doing this, like, are you guys feeling that this is the right thing to do? You know, what's everybody's take? And I think as long as we can basically encourage people to keep track of what's going on around them and not, not become complacent, not saying that, well, you know, all these companies do it, so like if this company does it, it's fine, all of them do it. So just fight that complacency, try to bring issues back to the PMC's mailing list, and then, you know, the solutions are typically reasonable because a lot of times, you know, just a single email from a chair of the project uh, back to the corporate, you know, uh, email address, uh, marketing at company name, you know, or some such, would do the trick. I mean, the companies would actually, actually just say, like, thank you, we didn't know, you know, we fixed it, whatever it was. Uh, sometimes, you know, they wouldn't respond and then you would basically include it into the uh, report that you're submitting to the board. Or if it's, you know, uh, significant enough of a violation, you may even flag it to the board, you know, sooner than your next report. And then it's literally up to the board to help you deal with that, right? Again, they will tell you to do a certain set of things, but at the end of the day, if it really gets tough, you know, the board will get involved. And ASF actually does have legal resources to even send cease and desist letters, you know, if it comes to that. Like, I haven't actually done it once. You know, I haven't seen it done, done even once. But those legal resources exist. I think it goes more directly to the trademarks. And Thanks, Nick. I, I, what, I've, what I've seen on trademarks is it actually should direct them to trademarks and then uh, Shane can handle it uh, and he can connect with the lawyer. So it's more of a, an officer's type thing than a board thing. Yeah, could be. Yeah, oh, yeah I, th that I agree with. All I'm saying is, and maybe again, maybe that's just my inner mentor, you know, speaking. I like keeping board appraised of just about everything. And even if all we did is, you know, we send the, you know, email to let's say trademarks at apache.org, 
even that has to go into the report. So that's that's all I'm saying. Um, I also wanted to comment on this a little bit. One thing we've told our people internally and found is it's much better to get those like if the marketer goes off the rails, it's much better to hear that internally than to get called out on the list. Mm -hmm. So you shouldn't actually feel bad about telling your own company, hey, that's not gonna work, because they'd rather hear it from you than from Apache officially. Mm -hmm. um, so that's at least something we tell our people is please be even more diligent in policing us than, mm -hmm. um, than the outside. Yeah, I would agree with that. Uh, so first of all, what you're suggesting is somebody on a community see something off. And indeed, I would suggest the first direction is notifying the PMC, pr preferably private. So within the PMC, you likely will have one of the uh, participants being an em employer of the company in question. And so the natural path and, and the ideal path would be this is then uh, uh, resolved internally and, and, and doesn't need to escalate to public or trademark or stuff like that. So uh, first of all, I think the PMC is the first line responsible entity to, to monitor and being aware and, and if need be escalate the problem. Uh, but anyone in the community, if you see something which you think this is odd, in, take the initiative to notify the PMC privately uh, and then see how, and they probably will respond with you so you will be aware, even if you're not on the PMC. Uh, and then it will take next steps after that. But typically it should, the most cases, it's just somebody misunderstanding the problem, the, the, the situation, and it can be uh, easily resolved in practice. If it hasn't gone wild on Twitter. Yes, so that's what I meant. Don't do a private PMC email and not Twitter. Okay, well, we've got a few minutes left. So would anyone like to pose a question to the panel? Any members like to chip in with anything? Okay. Uh, at the outset, there was mention about maybe talking about running businesses off of Apache software or trying to commercialize Apache software. Do any of you have any thoughts on things to do or not do to try to make that happen? So one area that I've seen be very successful with this is providing support and consulting opportunities on top of the Apache products. You're not violating anything about the brand. You're making it very clear that you can assist with the implementation, the delivery, the setup of these Apache products while not violating anything about the core deliverables of those products. Um, Hadoop would be a good example of this where you can actually go on site and help set up a 25,000 node cluster for someone, and that makes a lot of sense because that's not something you would expect from the project to do. Um, at the same time, I would shy from saying, I have a commercial distribution of Tomcat, and that is what I'm shipping to you, because that is a problem from both a branding and a naming standpoint. Oh. I was just gonna pass oh. it to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just, I'll just, you know, maybe reiterate sort of the unusual business that, you know, may exist, uh, which has actually little to do with existing Apache projects and everything to do with the future Apache projects. Uh, what I found is that a lot of traditional enterprise companies these days, they go through this phase, you know, like in popular literature it being referred as digital transformation. Uh, and as part of that, it's actually, you know, on them to redefine themselves, at least in, you know, large part, as software companies. And they, at some point, all realize that part of that redefinition includes having two-way relationship with open source communities. And there's actually a great deal of what you're doing, which is inner source, essentially internally changing the culture, legal climate, just everything about the company to make them capable of that type of, you know, two-way street relationship with open source communities. Uh, it is a boutique business, I would say, 
but it is one that is extremely well paid. So it's kind of like, you know, it's the bit that McKinsey cannot do for them. Let me put it this way. Yeah, just a small uh, extra note. I mean, my company is like I already explained, like the product we, we, we deliver, which is also open source, is like 80, 90% based on Apache software. So what, how we say it, we really are standing on the shoulders of giants. And we do add value in our own uh, adaption of these projects and added features on top of that and we commercialize that so and then in our case we actually do this on a support subscription based uh, but there is so much uh, value in the apache projects that anyone who cannot add value and and make a product out of that he's not on the right track because you you need smart people uh, you need to have an edge you need to have something your competitors are not having or uh, not looking at, so you have a niche in the market, but there's so much added value where you can leverage Apache software for. Uh, there's, I see no reason why people can't build a commercial business on top. And, and actually it's like one of the best foundations you could start with. Do we have any other Apache members in the room who want to have a quick comment on their business models? Willing to share? Nope. Okay, unfortunately we are out of time. I see the next speaker hovering at the back of the room. So thank you very much to our lovely panel. And thank you all for coming.